the Shure SM58 versus the Shure SM57, specifically for vocals on stage. I'm using the Earthworks SV33 at the moment. Here they are. Put them in front of my eyes so the camera focuses on them, hopefully. Fairly similar, but slightly different. The main difference being this, and this is what uh, Shaw has to say. It says that they're based on the same cartridge design. The main difference is the grill design. The SM58 was designed for vocal applications, so it uses a, a ball with foam as an effective pop filter. The SM57 was designed as an instrument microphone where a smaller grill size is preferred, presumably for getting into tight spots, and the pop and wind are not usually a concern. The SM57 uses an integral resonator grill assembly where the grill is actually part of the cartridge and uh, the FM58 doesn't. Let's take the top off the FM58 so you can see top does come off the 57. I've looked on how to do it and decided that I wouldn't. So there they are, 58 and the 57. Notice the 58 has some foam on there. I don't know about the 57, but I doubt it somehow. Have a look at the, uh, the graphs. Apologies for a couple of things, the poor quality of the graphs and also uh, the noise from upstairs. Saturday, people are doing stuff. They do mention, sure, about there being on the 57 around about five kilohertz, that there's more, there's a boost there, and you can see that on the graph. You can see that the, the peak in the 57 starts higher up, and there's a little bit more spread on the 58. Through the middle, they're much the same, and the low end proximity trace isn't shown but the low end is very similar as well size and weight 58 feels a little heavier to me but I could be wrong 58 with uh, is for stage work as a vocalist is uh, easier to feel where you are this is more likely to you're more likely to drop it but it's designed as an instrument mic sure do sell uh, a foam attachment if you want to use this for vocals it looks nicely done it's like squared off and with a set screw to keep it on i'm going to use for this comparison some uh, biodynamic foam to reduce the pops so bear that in mind some of you may know i like to do this tapping thing whether it means anything or not i don't know but i have some suspicions it might very subtly so the sm58 sounds like this physically And the 57, deader sounding without the slight ring, and I'm suspecting the slight ring is this. The grill, which can be heard as a component in this sound. Whereas the 57 doesn't have that ring to it. That does, to my, in my experience, seem to flavor the sound of things when they're plugged in and being used. Talking of which, this is the SM58, SM58, bring it in closer, SM58, SM58. This is the SM57. So immediately what I hear is what they say. S -s -s -s. Roughly the same era of manufacture, I believe. One of them's not massively vintage. Neither of them is brand new. Uh, so this is the SM57, SM57. This is the SM58. The SM58 has got a bit more, ooh, 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 ooh. but that might be because the top isn't so accentuated. This is the SM58. This is the SM58 coming in close. This is the SM58. This is the SM58. This is the SM57 coming in closer. This is the SM57, so definitely I'm aware, all the time I'm aware of, uh, of that. Before I forget, 
I have noticed with the 57, seems to be a little bit of noise, not much, but some. So um, I'm going to leave the 57 on, on the 33 at the minute, and then I'm going to move it near to my transformer on the desk. And this newer desk hasn't been a problem with any the mics I've been using since I've got it. So I'll just uh, show you what's going on. This is the SM57 then. There's a little bit of something even there, which I don't think is the fan. I think it's something else. But I'm going to put it towards the desk now. I don't know if you can hear, there was a hum there. This is the SM58, which even like this, doesn't have the same noise that the 57 had. I'm going to put it close, close to the desk. And I don't hear anything. So I don't know if that's to do with a transformer or what, or just this particular sample. Anyway, I thought I'd mention it. May as well quickly give you an idea of the polar pattern. So there's the 58 straight on coming round to the side, coming round to the side. You can hear the rejection coming round to the side. Quite good rejection there. Coming round to the back. And you can hear the, the, uh, the lobe or where it picks up slightly there. Round to the side. Good rejection again. Round to the front. SM57 on the front, coming round to the side, coming round to the side, coming round to the side, there's a rejection happening, coming round to the side, a bit noisy there with the breath, coming round to the back, and uh, seems to be a bit more coming through there, than coming round to the side again. They also say that because you can get closer to the diaphragm on the 57, you can get more low end out of it, low end, it's not real low end at all, low end, low end, low end, low end. Similar sounding. I'm going to run through the hissy things and stuff that I do just to give you an idea. Whilst I'm at it, whilst I'm at it, handling noise 58. Handling noise 57, very similar. So the hiss test on the 58, see if you can hear the kind of quality of hiss that it delivers. Thirty-three. It might be me, but the fifty-seven is a little edgier. This one, anyway, at the top. That's what I hear. Do the hum test. That's uh, showing there. Generally, then, I'd say the fifty seven, I wouldn't say it sounds more open, but it's it's brighter more brightly lit at the top there. Um, that's what I'm noticing. I'll try with the ohm. 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 Very close. I'm on the 33. Well, if you particularly like that slight 
thing that the 57 has going on, then you might want to use it with a with the shore foam. Can't really see the point, but if you're stuck, it can be done. It could be used without the foam if you're careful. If you're stuck, you've got an idea. They're very similar. Um, with the 57 to me being a little edgier. It does make me wonder, though, why have I got this 57? Well, when I was running a band and doing stuff, I thought I'd better have a couple of mics for sax players and so on. And I got a 57. Why did I get a 57? This was a while back before I started getting more interested in these things, just because everybody used them. So from using these two here, I'm beginning to wonder what's going on to some extent, because uh, I've said this before in another video. If you play guitar, you choose your strings. You might want nickel strings. You might want stainless steel, partly for the feel, but for the sound. You might want genuine bumblebee capacitors. You will swap out your pickups at quite some expense for Lollas or Dimarzios or whatever. Your amps, you want your valve amp rather than transistor, and maybe even swap your valves. Some people do. They swap speakers. They do all this stuff. They, we want maybe a solid pine cabinet rather than ply, because that adds when things get going. So I do find myself wondering, after you've done all that, why would you put this in front of it? Not knocking anything, really, but it just doesn't seem to make sense to me. And it occurred to me, is a, a kind of robotic thinking, habitual thinking, and just copying everybody else, is it really that powerful that this still seems to be the go-to mic for recording instruments where it seems to me it plainly doesn't make sense why why? <laughs> why would you put this after all that time and money that you spent honing your sound 